Well, good morning, Rama Roach Church family and friends. This is a Sunday message for March 22nd, 2020. And uh, let me begin by saying that uh, why not get your Bible if you don't have it already in front of you. And I would like to start and bring you an encouraging word today from God's word. Let me begin my prayer. Father, just uh, be with us now, and uh, may your word go forth and uh, do its work. Come, Lord Jesus, I pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, in our present world, in our day today, it's really dominated by fear, isn't it? But the truth is that those of us who love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ need to have no fear at all. God's word is filled with encouraging words and promises for us to proclaim. The awesome words of Isaiah 41 example fill us with fresh confidence and uh, even in a world that is experiencing what we are experiencing today. He writes in Isaiah, uh, God writes in Isaiah 41.10, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, some things that we need to understand about fear. The first thing is that fear can be good or bad. Fear is a feeling of uneasiness or dread that we experience when we feel threatened. This type of bad fear can be physical or it can be emotional. You know, in the Old Testament, Adam, when he knew that he and Eve had ignored God's command, was gripped by fear. And so we can often feel bad fear when we have trespassed laws of God or we have trespassed the laws of society. I think that if you've been speeding down the road and all of a sudden you see the red light flashing, there is a fear that grips you about of what's coming. Fear is often the product, however, of sin as well. But not all fear is sinful, and not all fear is bad. Good fears are the godly ones that represent our natural need for protection. Fear of heights helps us to respect the boundaries. Fear of traffic on the roads keeps us wary and watchful to be aware and careful. There's also a fear that's described in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. And now, O Israel... What does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. And so the fear of the Lord is not being afraid of him, but having a sense of awe and reverence, respect for him. As 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, or some other versions say a fear, spirit of timidity, he is not the source of the fear that hinders us, or he is not the source of the bad fear either. What are some causes of fear? Well, we can learn at an early age to be wary of certain things. Many of our fears are learned through experience. Fears may be planted in our minds by the repetitions of our parents or teachers or even what we hear in the media. Sometimes our imagination can delude us into fears that are not based upon reality or facts. And uh, an example would be perhaps of horror movies, of the fear that they can bring. And there's nothing real about it. It's just a movie. Guilt from the past is another cause of fear. If we fail to understand that we are fully forgiven by God, that when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and we ask for forgiveness and we accept his forgiveness in our place on the cross, if we don't understand that, if we don't grasp that, then our past can cause us fear. There's sometimes a lack of understanding about the truth. This can be another factor when we don't understand the truth. As many believers aren't aware of their security in the Lord Jesus Christ that they need not fear judgment, that Christ has paid the price. When you don't grasp that truth, that fear of judgment can be overwhelming. 
Other people harbor fears because they doubt the word of God. They doubt God's word that is filled with so many wonderful, wonderful promises for those who belong to him. What are the consequences of fear? Well, if you're beset by fears, you need to begin by asking what this way of life is costing you. It will impact in ways we can't even imagine because fear does not represent who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Fear stifles our productivity. It keeps us from doing our best. It holds us back. It divides our mind. It keeps us from focusing on those things that God wants us to focus on. That is good and right and pure and holy. All the things that God wants us to consider. It keeps us from that. It destroys our relationships. It hinders us financially. The truth about fear is that it really enslaves you. And it begins to govern your life, your attitudes, your feelings. It will take hold of every area of a person's life. So the price of fear becomes a terrible one. And we seldom realize we're paying for it. So what is the cure for fear? How do we overcome it? Well, the first thing is you need to acknowledge it. You need to acknowledge it. We know that the bad fear does not come from God. We've already looked at that, but we'll look at it again. 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear or of timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. We must believe that God will uphold us because he has promised to be with us every step of our journey. God is with us. He's with you. We must claim his promise, acknowledge the fear that we have, admitting to ourselves, to, to the Lord, Lord, I'm afraid about this. Then having acknowledged it, the fear becomes a reality for us. We can take the second step to cure fear, which is identifying its source. Realizing we're afraid is not the same as understanding the source of that fear that's coming against us. There are times when we realize we are afraid, but we have a vague idea, we have a vague realization of what lies behind the emotion, often because we don't want to face the truth. And so that's why it's so important to specifically identify the threat in life that's making you afraid. When you take this step and you spend time thinking about it, reflecting on it, uh, about the thoughts that are causing you this distress, you find the true cause and you give it a name. Sometimes many people are afraid of failure, and because of that, they never take any risks. In the days that we are experiencing now, there's probably the fear of dying. Uh, with so many dying in the world, people are afraid of dying. There's the fear of the economy collapsing, and uh, the fear of not having work, of not having employment, not having money. These are all real fears, and uh, uh, we need to put a name on it, and we need to identify exactly what it is we're afraid of. And perhaps it's the future of what's coming. We're afraid of what's coming next because we don't know. Once you have named it, you cure it by focusing on God. Here is a key step, focusing on our God. Turn your focus from your fear and you turn it to God, your Heavenly Father. Realize that He is in control of everything. Whether it is your health, whether it is your employment situation, whether it is COVID-19, whether whatever it is, that whatever that source of your fear may be, you need to realize that God is over it all. God is more powerful than any challenge we may face. And he loves us with an abiding love. His word is clear about that. Therefore, we should be spending time with him. We need to thank him and praise him. As the writer of Romans 8.28 says, that God causes everything to work together for those who love him. God causes everything to work together for the good, for the good of those who love him. And so in your love to God, he will bring even bad situations to good. I'm often reminded, look back in your life. I say this over and over at Ramo Road Church. You've heard me say this many times. Look back in your life, and as your life has progressed, 
and you chal and you face those difficult times in life, look how you got through. Look how things came out and, and how you survived. And sometimes very good things happen because of some bad things. And as we do this, as we, as we focus on God, our hearts and our minds will find fresh encouragement because we turn it over, we give it over to the one who is above all, who is greater than all. In order to cure our fear, fourthly, we need to exercise faith. We need to exercise our faith. Now, we fully realize that God is with us. He's promised to be with us wherever we go. Therefore, we are free to walk in faith. This means living out the decision that we have made about Christ being Lord of all. We call him Savior, but he is also Lord. Savior, he saves us from our sin for what he has accomplished upon the cross of Calvary. But he is also our Lord. He, he desires to come into our lives and fill us in such a way that our life becomes his life. That we are living a life that the Lord is in full control of in all things. And as we allow that, as we trust him and have faith in him to do that. It's exciting to watch him work through our faith as he will provide for every need and he will lead you in every step that you need to take. It reminds me of Elisha when the Armenians were at war with Israel. The Armenian king went to capture Elisha because he was a very powerful prophet. We read in 2 Kings chapter 6 beginning at verse 15. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. O oh my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than with those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked. And he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. What a picture. Elisha and his servant surrounded by an army. And the servant says, what are we going to do, Elisha? And Elisha says, Lord, open his eyes to see. And all around are the armies of God and more of them than of the armies of man. We need to exercise faith, believe that with God, we, are, we outnumber the enemy in all ways. God plus one is greater than all. In order to cure your fear, we lastly need to verbalize the truth. We do this by putting our commitment into words, having acknowledged and identified our fear Having turned our focus to God, we begin to say things like, Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, that I am saved. Thank you for protecting, for providing for me. Thank you for all the wonderful gifts that you give me each day, Lord. Now I can confront those things and those people in life that have made me so afraid because you will go with me. You will give me strength. Talk to God like that. Be thankful for what he's going to do, for what he is doing, what he has done in your life. And as you affirm the word of God, and as you speak your faith, fear will subside. As your trust goes, grows stronger day by day, week by week, year by year. So I need to ask you the question. Can you think of any truly good thing that God has not promised his people? Can you think of any worldly threat for which he has not already provided our assurance? If I know, if, if I know that virtually God is everywhere and he's with us and over all, there's nothing to be afraid. But I know also that if you are like everyone else in this world, you will also have fears from time to time. But these will be fears that you have not faced spiritually and rationally. We need to identify them, turn them over to God today. 
you know, if you can change a situation that's bringing you the fear, then you should change it. If you cannot change it, which is the case in most situations and in what is happening in our world today, you need to turn it over to God. So let me say to you, if you walk in the Spirit, trusting in the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, then His love will come and surround you and overpower that fear. His truth will overpower your irrational doubts and His presence will cast out all the darkness. The cure for your fear is right within your grasp. You only need to take the hand of our, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in faith. And the words of Isaiah will come true to you. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Jesus is with you. Don't be discouraged. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. That's God's promise. And our God has not, nor will he ever, ever forsake a promise. You can place your trust in him. Have you done that? Will you put your trust in Jesus Christ and let him be Savior and Lord of your life? And if you've already done that, but perhaps you've been faltering, perhaps you've been in this time and what's happening in our world, you've allowed fear to come. No, no, no. Turn it over to Jesus and let him walk with you and may you know that he's with you and whatever you face, he will take you through it. This world is not our world. As children of God, we are to be with him and one day we will be. Have that hope, have that trust. God bless you. May you be encouraged. Let me pray with you. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for the privilege and the honor of, of coming before you. I pray that each one listening here and watching this video will draw near to you and will not let the fear overpower them, the fear that is in all the world right now. Lord, I pray that we will see that you are above all these things, that you can bring good out of this. I pray that in the world, good will come out of this that many yet will turn to you, many yet will come to acknowledge you as their God, that they will come in faith to you and accept your salvation in Jesus Christ. Bless these, your people, help us in these days. May the church remain strong and faithful as a people, and we just seek you and we look to you in all things. Amen, amen, amen. My name is Peter Tursa. I'm pastor of Rymel Road Community Church. And uh, please stay tuned and uh, I'll be uploading more videos as time goes on. God bless. Have a great Lord's Day.